This week on CrossFeed. The Holy Family Love Triangle. Though he was rich, he became rich. Then he murdered Santa. And stole the gun. What do you expect from a Jewish zombie? Welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio, near Cleveland. Hi, I'm Pastor Jim Butler, out here in beautiful Boston, Massachusetts. Hope you're all doing well and uh, that you had a half happy and safe holiday uh, now that we are through with through all 12 days of Christmas. Yep, yep. Happy Epiphany, everybody. And we have a Wednesday night service here, and so... Uh, and since Epiphany fell on a Wednesday this year, we actually got to have an Epiphany service. It was kind of nice. I'm a big mm. fan of Epiphany. It's the, you know, for those not familiar, it's the feast of the um, celebration of the coming of the three wise men. Or not necessarily three, but, um, and uh, this was a, was a really big holiday in the early church because, and, and still is in the, um, uh, the Eastern uh, Orthodox Church. Or that's when they celebrate their Christmas, or I forget exactly how it works, but um, and it was a big deal because it's to celebrate that Jesus came for the Gentiles, and so it's actually you know well Jesus coming into the flesh would be no good to most of us if you know if it weren't for the fact that he came for everybody, and that's what Epiphany's all about. He came for everybody, and uh, they kind of got swallowed up into the whole Christmas thing, um, but. You know, it's it's a separate thing, and so uh, it's you know, I was really happy to be able to do a separate Epiphany service this year. It's those goofy things that pastors get excited about. <laughs> See, we've had uh, separate Epiphany service as long as I've been here. Actually, what I used to do in my last congregation, where we didn't have a Epiphany service, we would celebrate it on the Sunday prior. So, um, I've been celebrating Epiphany regularly for some time. But we got together with two other churches last night, and um, I I did read the lessons, and another pastor did the liturgy, and another pastor preached, and our uh, wonderful organist uh, led the worship, played the organ, and this uh, young woman who is organist at another church, actually she's a pianist, and she's a concert pianist, and she had a friend of hers who was a concert cellist come in. Wow. And so they did uh, 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 piano, so the prelude and the postlude and the other music was piano and cello duets. Cool. It was, it, and they, it was, it was beautiful. It was just spectacular. And uh, so uh, that was, that was nice. It was very nice. But, uh, so that's Christmas and stuff, but... Uh, it was a nice Christmas, <sighs> or or maybe not. You know, you talked about Epiphany and the story of Mary and Joseph, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, I gotta say something about the stories tonight. A lot of these are stupid people. Okay, yeah. you're gonna hear me complain a lot. I mean, <laughs> okay. So this first one is. Well, hold on. We should what? also. I, I like to do this every once in a while. Okay, we have at least a couple of the stories tonight are, are definitely talking about some adult themes. All right, so just a reminder, anybody that's sort of just running across the show for the first time, it's a couple of pastors talking about it, okay? But that doesn't mean it's for the whole family, okay? Um, so just want to, this is really intended for adults or, um, you know, or at least uh, mature teenagers. Not that we always act real mature, but, you know, that's the idea. Speaketh for thyself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <Anyway>. yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> was down in New Zealand, and this was a um, billboard put up by St. Matthew in the City Anglican Church. And the church vicar, Archdeacon Glenn Carty, put up a, they put up a billboard, had Mary and Joseph in bed after sex, saying... Poor Joseph, God is a hard act to follow. Yep. 
and and Mary and Joseph's kind of like looking down sad and and Mary's kind of looking up sort of like disappointed or whatever you know you get the idea okay <clears throat> okay I I I you know I couldn't even imagine a church doing this I mean as if they had this they asked this one Catholic guy about it he said that's what I expected non Christian to do to land, you know make fun of the Christianity um, you know I couldn't believe a church did this you know and what really got me is this guy is this this billboard is trying to lampoon and ridicule. The very literal, literal idea that God is a male and somehow this male God impregnated Mary. Uh, we would question the virgin birth in any literal sense. We would question so, the maleness of God in any literal sense. Okay, so, number one. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, okay, I'll let you handle the virgin birth. Okay. Nobody has said God is male in a literal sense. Let me, let, let's highlight this real, real, real quickly, okay? Uh, it, God is beyond male and female. God is spirit. We understand that. However, God has revealed. However, we can never sit there and talk about God itself because it doesn't have a, it isn't a person. It's a thing. Um, God has revealed himself using male language consistently throughout scripture. Or we're stuck to what some people say is, well, using the term God self. And so, you know, and I actually heard somebody, you know, and God said to God self, uh, you know, and I did, I, I heard that, and I actually thought, you really talk that way? Are you going to do that with anybody else? Jim said to Jim self. <laughs> you know, see, Dale's laughing to Dale self right now, you know. That's I'm, that's uh, you know, like Elmo on Sesame Street. <laughs> Elmo wants to come along, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it's, it's it's a really bizarre way of speaking. But okay, but we we understood, have to understand the personhood somehow, and God has revealed Himself. It's, this is ha- this is not about what we call God. It's about how God reveals Himself, and God has revealed Himself, you know, consistently using prayer, uh, uh, male imagery. Um, even Jesus calling God his father, he it, it, uh, uh, it, it expounded on that male imagery. Yeah. All right. So I'll let actually, you deal with the, the virgin birth of Je- uh, the virgin birth here. Well, I've got I've got the the church's actual website, and um, they have uh, five purposes in putting up this billboard. Okay. Um, number one, to invite people to think about the virgin birth and the nature of God. And he says that that one was hugely successful. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's true. People thought about it. Okay. Um, number two, to say that there was more than one Christian way to think about the virgin birth and God. Indeed, there are many. Yes, that is true. Only one, however, is correct. <laughs> <laughs> There's an infinite number of ways to think about it. <laughs> you can, you know... You can think about it in a box. You can think about it with a fox. All right. <laughs> you can think about it here or there. You can think about it anywhere. <laughs> but the simple reality is... We are fluent about... Dr. Seuss, both yes. of us. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, read my Christmas Eve sermon. <laughs> um, but uh, you, um, you know, if, if you're thinking about it in such a way that contradicts uh, Luke chapter 2 and, and Luke chapter 1 when we're talking about his conception... Um, then you're thinking about it in a wrong way, all right? And and you are thinking about it in a fictionalized way, um, as opposed to the revealed true word of God. Right? You're thinking about it in a Mormon way. <laughs> well, there's that too. Well, and the, you know, and that's the other thing. This whole issue of um, where Jim mentioned the uh, the the third point, uh, or no, I'm sorry, it's the fourth point about the literalistic view. Um, because yeah, the idea that God is a male, um, in that sense that literally sired Jesus, um, in the sense of sort of going to bed with Mary, um, is it? It's unscriptural. Not only does God say, "Am I a man?" and you know, or, or, or probably better translation is, "I'm not a man, am I?" Um, so pointing out that he's spirit, 
Okay. But actually, you know, if you read Luke 1, it says the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. It doesn't say the Father will. Okay. Right. Now, it, you know, you get into the whole Trinity thing and how does that all work? We don't have to worry about the details. And I don't, you know, but the point is, is that, um, you know, nobody, only the Mormons are saying that this is God the Father, you know, sort of mm-hmm. knocks on the door and says, hey. Um, so, and even Mormons have, uh, you know, if you ask them about it, they, they don't really like to go in much in the way of details on it. But then um, it's, the other point is to promote the progressive view of Jesus having two human parents and God being the power of love in his life. In other words, not only no virgin birth, even though um, Isaiah talked about him being born of a virgin 600 years before it happened, um, you know, and there's, you know, there's sort of this point made, you know, even Mary says, how can this be since I'm a virgin? Actually, she says, how can this be since I have not known a man? Well, okay. Yeah. She's, she's, yeah, I mean, but she's very, very specific. Okay, she's not being stupid. Uh, 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 I mean, you know, and there the word's not even. You know, it's not. It's, you can't even argue how you translate. You know, yeah. like the word virgin there because she doesn't use that term. She says, "I have not known a man." That's literally what she right. she says. You know, yeah. she knows she knew the birds and the bees, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, she's she's not okay. I mean, uh, so if Jesus has two human parents and God is the power of love in his life. That means, number one, Jesus is just like us, which means then he would have been sinful and couldn't be a savior. Or, at best you get, is adoptionism, in which, you know, at his baptism, Jesus was adopted by the Father as his son. Um, and that's a heresy the church condemned long ago, which just goes to show there's no such thing as new heresies. Just yep. recycle old ones. The yep. church is very green. We recycle old heresies. <laughs> Yeah, sadly, we don't really learn from history, um, and and which also this means that uh, or, you know, or the other way to look at it, it's the power of love in his life. In other words, Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, was an atheist. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe Jesus was really Marty McFly. <laughs> there you go. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that was, you know, it was a theme song to you know, Back to the Future for the power of love. The you power know? of so, love. Yep. <laughs> um, so that was actually Marty McFly, folks. Yep. Okay, now we got that figured out. But where was his DeLorean? Oh, we'll yeah. come back to the DeLorean. We're talking about how rich we'll Jesus was. <laughs> we'll come back. All right. Wait. There's yeah. the first of all the fifth point. Uh, to invite people outside of the church to see a type of Christianity here at St. Matthew's that they might be able to relate to. Okay, this is that whole where you talk about speaking the truth in love. Okay, the, you know, our, our message, that those are sort of the two parameters that you should have for any message that you as a, as a church, or for that matter, you as a Christian, convey. All right, it should be the truth and it should be done in a loving way. Okay, this was it. Was it the truth? No, absolutely not. All right, not even close. It, 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 you know, sort of walked up to the truth and poked it in the eye. All right, and was it done in love? No. All right, it was done to make people mad and and get people all you know wound up and and upset and 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 all kinds of stuff like that. Um, his uh, the pastor's comment on it was uh, we have had lots of wonderful response from people for whom this billboard gave them a reason to hope that maybe there was room in the inn for in the inn of Christianity for from them or at least with us out the back. Uh, So yeah, we're out there in the, um, in the stable and all the other Christians are the ones that don't have room for us. Right. Well, we would except for the fact that you are, Teaching heresy. Yes. Uh, you know, I mean, you're not you're not Christian. <laughs> That's all. The, you can't be. You know, if you're denying Jesus, you know, uh, uh, deity, and you, you know, which if he has two human parents, you have to deny his deity. Um, I mean, okay, go on to number five. What was your fifth reason? 
That was the fifth one. Oh, that was the fifth one. Okay, I'll tell you. Well, some people quite didn't quite really get a kick out of this because it was up for a very short time, and he was just very adamant it was not coming down. Though a lot of people asked, including uh, his supervisor, uh, the bishop of uh, uh, there. Yeah, now we know why um, uh, Anglicans have so much trouble going on. Well, um, well, he just told me it was insensitive. It, yes. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, that was putting it mildly, but, uh, <laughs> not uh, to mention heresy people, or anything. <laughs> um, uh, uh, attacked it with knives and spray paint and graffiti. And, uh, you know, uh, the billboard went up on Thursday morning. It was covered in paint six hours later and then went missing overnight. They put up a new one and it was knife. <laughs> it was nice that evening. <laughs> so it didn't stick up very long. They, they kind of figured, I think they found out that. Their version. So I guess he's right. This really got a lot of people thinking. How can I? How fast can I get some paint to cover this over? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how can I most effectively demolish this? <laughs> well, my favorite one is it went missing overnight. How did it go missing? How do you take a tire <laughs> billboard? A billboard, out? yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. Maybe they should put a little put it on little milk cartons there. If you've seen this billboard, please call. <laughs> well, you know, maybe they need, you know how, like, a lot of churches uh, around Christmas time when they have their uh, nativity scenes outdoors, and because there's this propensity of people to steal the baby Jesus out of the nativity scene, that pe- they've started putting GPSs inside the, um, the baby <laughs> Jesus so they can track him down. All right, guys, next time you put up one of these obnoxious billboards, you got to put a GPS in it so you can figure out where it went. <laughs> And it's just, I don't know, I just, but like we said, obviously Jesus was Marty McFly and he had a DeLorean, which then brings us then to an equally. Now, this isn't from the liberals. This is from guys who would consider themselves and probably stand up and say, I'm a Bible believing pastor. Mm-hmm. But it's the wonderful guys uh, in the prosperity gospel. The name it, claim it, market, park it, guys. Yeah, but this and is a new spin that I haven't heard before. Yeah, that, yeah but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesus wasn't so poor after all. Uh, now, I've heard the first one, that Jesus had these lucrative gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I've heard that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, but the, the one I had, and he said that the, the Roman soldiers crucified him, gambled for his expensive garments. And Jesus and Mary, Mary and Joseph lived and traveled in style. Uh, Mary and Joseph took a Cadillac to get to Bethlehem because the finest transportation of their day was a donkey. Poor people ate their donkey. Only the wealthy used it as transportation. Okay. Pastor Anderson. Number one, please show me where the Bible says she, Mary rode a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It doesn't. Right. Number two, please show me where under Jewish uh, 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 ritual law they were allowed to eat a donkey. That was an unclean food. <laughs> okay. That would be an unclean animal because they didn't chew the cud and didn't have a split hoof. I did not know that. Yep. Number three, please explain to me why in uh, uh, Exodus and the redemption of the firstborn that the people didn't have to give their firstborn donkeys to God. They could redeem it with a lamb instead. Because the animal, as a pack animal, was extremely valuable. And you, nobody would eat a donkey. Right. Yeah. Even if it said it... Unless, of course, they're Shrek and it, it was about to make waffles. Then they might. <laughs> In the morning, I'm making waffles. <laughs> Let's be friends, you know. So maybe maybe if it's saying to you or something, you might. I don't know. but uh, Yeah, um, but, you know, when you got a donkey that starts singing the monkeys, then, you know. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, um, seriously, this, I mean... There's okay. nothing in the Bible that says that they actually. I, had a, I have a, there's a pastor friend of mine up here who would say there's no way in the world they were too poor to have a donkey. They would have walked. Mm-hmm. Which, if you figure out, through Mary walked 80 miles. No wonder she was ready to drop that kid when she got there. <laughs> yeah, she was probably only eight months along. You know, <laughs> all that walking. 
Um, you know, and th- 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 okay, just to get the other argument out there right away, um, and that is that Judas was the treasurer of the group. He carried, he was in charge of the money bag. All right. Well, if you're poor, why would you have a money bag? Okay. So let's, let's actually handle these sort of chronologically, um, or at least in the order that he presents them. I guess it's not chronological, but all right. Gold, he was given these gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay. Now, this is uh, the, I've always heard it understood, and it makes perfect sense that what was that? What did they do with that? Well, gee, they traveled down to Egypt, lived there for what, a few years, and came back and traveled by, up to By Nazareth. the way, if Mary and Joseph were so wealthy, why did they lie to God? Mm hmm. Uh, because when they went in the temple for Mary's purification, they gave two turtle doves, which was the offering of the poor. The only thing you could do poorer than that was a grain offering, which was the very poorest people. But right. they gave the offering of the poor. So if they had the Cadillac and they traveled in the style, then they'd lied to God. Yeah. Right. They deliberately exactly. held their offerings. So yeah, that's how we know that he was poor, because of that offering. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and then there's also that whole, uh, um, is it Second uh, Corinthians eight nine? You know the grace of our yeah. Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. There we go into heresy again, because if Jesus was not poor, then he doesn't, then we don't um, become rich. Uh, Of course, you know, you could argue that, well, he was rich in the sense of his faith in God or, you know, I mean, and and you got to be careful with that to say, well, he became poor so that we can be rich, you know. (laughs) And Um, yeah, some of this stuff is just, I don't know. Uh, Jesus said, you always have the poor, but you will not always have me. Jesus did not affirm himself as being part of the poor class. That wasn't his point. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, uh, yeah, you can't even, you, you just, I don't even know where to ar- end that, begin that argument. That's not even logical. Um, the, the Roman soldiers, you know, gambling for Jesus' clothing on the cross. They wouldn't gamble for Jesus' clothing unless it was expensive. I don't know anybody, even Pamela Anderson, that would have people gambling for his underwear. Uh, that was some fine stuff he wore. Um, it was a one-piece garment. They didn't want to rip it apart. And yes, they would. I mean, it was part of the, it was part of the pay. Uh, that these guys got, they got to divide up what, and you know what, what meager belongings these people had. Um, you know, it was part of the humiliation. You took what they had, right. uh, and I don't know. It's just I just look at this and I'm well, just like, okay, what are you? Although doing? Jesus' robe, it was it was a seamless robe. Okay, so it was more valuable than your average, you know, toga or whatever they wore. Okay. It was. It was the one item that he owned. Well, really, it was the one item that he owned. Period. Pretty much. Um, but it was. It was something that actually that he did have that was a uh, higher quality. All right. But there was a point to it. All right. If I'm remembering this right, the priests wore robes like that. All right. It was. It was similar to, or or if not similar to, it was a, you know a duplicate of. A priest robe because Jesus came to be our priest, and so it was a symbolic um, garment. It was just a standard one-piece outfit that all all the men wore for underwear. It was it was I think the words kiton, uh, and then over that you wore something else, and over and then you wore the the cloak over that. It, it was the kind of the standard one-piece piece there for that all male clergy that all men wore. Okay, and uh, nothing really you know I mean, but. No, if it was what would have been what may, shown if it was wealthy is if it was made out of linen. Right. If it said yeah. it was a linen garment, that was the naked guy in uh, uh, Mark's Gospel who ran away naked, leaving behind a linen garment. And the fact that that was made out of linen showed wealth. 
But they were, I can't remember what the fabric that they often used was. It was very rough hewn. It was, was, wasn't, you know, a, a fancy thing at all. Um, and I don't know. I, I mean, I just can't stand uh, uh, um, for, uh, liberalism drives me crazy because it's the denial of the gospel. And prosperity gospel is drives me crazy because it's also a denial of the gospel. It's making God into your ATM. If you do the right thing, um, and you know, give God the right, the right, things or, or do the right stuff, then God is obligated to give you the money. You know, we are all, we are not God's children. We are all Jerry Maguire's. Show me the money. Mm-hmm. Oh, the one other argument um, about the that they had a treasurer that they had. I mean, they did get donations. It's how they survived. You remember, there's 13 guys traveling around, okay? They needed to eat, and they weren't, you know... Yeah, a lot of times they were in a village somewhere where they had followers, but then there was other times where they traveled through, like, Samaria and stuff, where there was nobody there to support them. They had to... I mean, they had to live. And so, yeah, they did receive donations, um... Right. You know. And and we knew there were some women who went and supported, and we a lot of the stuff we really don't know what that was actually like. You can't, you know, all the fact that there's a treasurer who's, you know, supposed to take care of the things. Uh, for example, the, the the Passover meal. Yes, they had an upper room, um, but they, you know, you know, Peter said, "Where should we go prepare everything?" They went out and purchased everything. Matter of fact, when Joseph Judas left, they thought he was going out to buy something for the meal. So we know that they, they, you know, provided their own needs sometimes. Um, and, uh, what was the other one here? Um, that was I don't know. There's just so many, there's just so much stuff here. You know, that Jesus, uh, 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 um, well, Luke Timothy Johnson, uh, uh who's a good, darn good theologian, just talked about how God ident- consistently in scripture identifies with the poor. And he does. Mm. Um, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's kind of sad that, you know, you get these prosperity guys out there saying that, you know, if you're not rich, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with your faith. You know, uh, <laughs> okay, so we've gone from one heresy to another heresy. Um, you know what we got to do? We got to just have Jesus shoot these people. <laughs> you homo sapiens and your guns. <laughs> this is just... Yeah, it's we just got like one ridiculously stupid person after another, huh? <laughs> and all right, so this is uh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Before we should do get to that, you know, if you can't get rich by praying, just steal it. I was actually thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. In uh, in the town of York, which actually is where my ancestors are from. Um, some of them <clears throat> in England. Uh, we have a priest who said that, all right, if, uh, you know, if you're, it's Christmas time and, and, uh, you, you can't provide for your family and that, you should just shoplift. Because, it's the lesser of two evils. It's it's better than because the alternative for these people, because they're so poor, because of the you know the recession and everything, is they would either you know the women would um, prostitute themselves and the men would um, would commit armed robbery. So you know, as an alternative, <laughs> you should shoplift. He said it's okay to steal from a large company, just don't do it from the mom and pop places. So it's okay to do it from Walmart. Just don't do it from, you know, I guess your local Ace Hardware or something. You know, I don't know. No, because that's a, you know, a, a big chain. Yeah, but it's but it's but it's franchised. So uh, you know, it's you know, it's, they, they have a big name, but it's it's not a big company. It's this is okay. Is there such a thing as a lesser of two evils? Yes, there is. But you have to remember that either choice is evil. Mm-hmm. And yes, you know, if somebody came to me and said I had a choice between my, you know, uh, um, well, I, I, if you remember the the book, uh, the Hiding Place by Corrie Ten Boom, she was hauled into by the Nazis. They asked her, "Do you have a a um, a radio?" 
And she said no. Um, she brought in one and gave it to them, and they had another at the home. So she lied. Is it correct? Is it good to lie? No. Was it, um, you know, but, it, you know, was it proper to disobey the authorities and hide the Jews? Was it proper to, you know, run an illegal, um, you know, to, to do, do, to lie, to cheat, to steal, do everything she did, take care of them? Rationing coupons and stuff. No, none of that's good. But you couldn't let them die either. There is such a thing as the lesser of two evils. Yeah. But you got to remember, both of them are evil. Yep. What he's saying is, if you have to steal in order to take care of yourself, that's not evil. That's not wrong. That's a good thing to. That's okay to do, and it's not okay. You know, this again. This is denying the gospel, right? Because the thing with the whole people, you know, people need to understand when we talk about that it's still evil, right? So when you find yourself, and you know, we all find ourselves in situations like that. Sometimes not so extreme, all right. But we've all found ourselves in situations where you had to choose the lesser of two evils. That, that you know, doing something, um, if, if you do something about the situation, you, there's just, there's nothing you can do without sin. Even if you don't do anything, that, you know, there's still, somebody's going to get hurt or, or whatever. And, and those are difficult, horrible things. And, and so, you know, you do what, you see as the lesser of two evils, and then you get on your knees and beg God for forgiveness and rejoice in the gospel, knowing that he still loves you, that, you know, that even though our world is so messed up, that there are times where we cannot even figure out a way to get out of the situation um, without sinning. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and that's true. Um, I, I, I argue the Lutheran ethical option is to sin boldly. Um, I wrote a paper on that. I had a class in um, Christian ethics, and I did my doctorate. And the professor uh, who was Reformed was of the opinion there's no such thing as a lesser of evils. Um, and uh, so I argued from the Lutheran perspective that there was. Um, and I, I, and I, I put in the paper, I wrote, I face it every time I have an election, uh, you know, because generally neither one of these people I think are, you know, what I would really want to, to vote for. Um, but, um, you know, but I, I face this stuff. Um, I said, but, you know, you know, the Lutheran view would be, you know, is Luther's letter them lengthen, both sin boldly, but believe more boldly still. You know, but realize that it's still sinful, and it still needs to be uh, uh, forgiven. Yeah. But Christ has forgiven it. But to tell people, just do it; it's okay. That's that's. Uh, uh, I I don't know who wrote this, by the way. Uh, uh, right pundits. I I like this guy. He says, Last year, uh, he threw Playboy. The same priest play threw Playboy magazines all the floor of a local market. He said that they're bad influence on children. No, it's okay. <laughs> you shoplift the Playboys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a snarky comment. Well, you know, this is definitely, uh, um, he's definitely got a bias <laughs> in the article, right? But uh, I have to say rightly so. Um, he says, um, a better argument from the shoplifting priest would be to argue against materialism just as was taught by Jesus. If you do not have everything you want, go without until you land on your feet again. There are plenty of places to go for a food handout or shelter, including Father Tim Jones' own parish offices. <laughs> hey, good point. <laughs> so, okay, now, so what you could do, though, is have Jesus, like I said, these guys, are, they're just, you know, steel is okay, uh, prosperity gospel is okay. I wonder how those two actually go together, you know, and uh, 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 there's no virgin birth. Maybe we just have Jesus shoot them all. There you go. Let God sort him out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, you can share this story. Okay. Um, this is in California. Do we have a city here? Uh, Nimpomo. Nimpomo. Okay. Nimpomo. N-I-P-O-M-O. All right. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a Christmas display. You know how you people put out uh, those inflatable uh you know, Santa Clauses and Frosty the Snowmans and, of course, you know, your nativity scenes and all that kind of stuff. Well, 
Here's a, a display in this guy's yard. Shows Jesus pointing a double barrel shotgun at Santa's dead body as Rudolph lays sprawled across the hood of a pickup truck nearby. And um, <clears throat> the neighbors complain. <laughs> Can't imagine why. I like this. This resident decorated his lawn with a depiction of Jesus shooting Santa Claus. I've heard of Daddy, Mommy kissing Santa Claus. Never heard of Jesus shooting Santa Claus. Yeah. <sighs> You know, uh, well, it's just such a short story. The guy says, I mean, it's an expression of my rep- my repressed creativity. Um, I think it's an expression of something. I, Well, you know, the thing is, this is that whole sort of keep Christ in Christmas thing taken to the extreme, right? You know, Magneto's right. There's a war coming. You sure you're on the right side? I, I've always been a bit uncomfortable with the the sort of militant keep Christ in Christmas message uh, just because it sorry my computer's acting just up because you agree with that uh, guy down in New Zealand <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um no, just because it's it's all law. It's it turns the message of of Christmas into law, and and it says, uh, you know, Christmas is all about keeping Christ in it. Okay, but what is what is keep Christ in Christmas? It's a message that um, of what you need to do. But Christmas isn't about what you need to do. It's about what God has done for you because you didn't do the things that you needed to do. It's sort of like when they say peace on earth, goodwill to men, you know, and, and what that means is that we're supposed to be nice to each other. Well, no, it's peace on earth and God's goodwill to us. And so that gets sort of forgotten along the way. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, well, it's interesting because I remember I, I one time wrote a sermon and it really kind of shocked some of the people because I titled it Jesus is not the reason for the season because you had all this Jesus is the reason for the season. Weren't, Jesus isn't the reason. We are. Because you got to remember, it goes beyond his, his, his manger, it goes to his death. Why did Jesus come to earth? Why did he die? Why did he rise? It's for me and you that we might be God's children. That we might have a life with God that we can't have on our own. And, uh, you know, but I don't know. This just, I, don't, I'm not, I wouldn't even go so far as to say this is keep Christ in Christmas. I think the guy's just being a jerk, you know. I mean, just as the answer there, this is my repressed creativity. This is your sick now, this creativity. Shows a, yeah, this shows a very size. Speaking of performance art. <laughs> I don't even want to read these out loud. Uh, don't, um, uh, 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 yeah, th- th- this one, it's, uh, this last one is about this best church of God. Um, and it, it, it yeah, sign the guy has is really offensive, but it, okay, it's a kind of a joke. This is performance art, it's a comedy troupe. It's a comedy troupe that, but they do performance art because they're they're they they they're, they're playing it straight. Mm-hmm. So this one guy's playing the part of Bas uh, of Pastor Dave and uh, what was it, organist Lindsay or something like that. Uh, and it's called the Best Church of God. Um, you know, the only church that God, um, uh, the only church that God goes to, uh, or something like that. That's what they call themselves. And some of it's kind of funny, you know. Um, um, you know, it has a sign, God hates figs, Mark eleven fourteen, 14, cursing the fig tree. Okay. I thought that was funny. I, I, yeah, I, I like know. that one too. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. Um, yeah, so there, you know, it's sort of it really, uh, a lot of it is a parody of the, um, Westboro Baptist church. Oh yeah. And a few, a bunch of other churches too. It's a parody of, they said they're, 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 they're quote services, which are the performances are a mixture of, of evangelical Catholic and, um, 
uh, product and, and, and Protestant stuff. For example, he has a crucifix pattern tie. This sort of thing has cropped up before, and it has always been due to oh. human error. You know, I thought, okay, is this really a, even a religious news story? You know, it's it's really just a kind of a parody. Um, you know, and, and they've got other stuff like, uh, you know, another sign, GOP pill-popping homophobic radio hosts for Christ. I see a reference to Rush Limbaugh there. Um, Except for Rush Limbaugh is not Christian. Well, no, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> he claims to be, but... He doesn't believe that in salvation by grace through Christ. Um, you know, I've never, I've never actually, I've heard other people say, you know, because you know I'm Christian or something. I've never heard him say, "Well, I am too." You know, I've never heard him make a, a, an actual proclamation of his faith. Maybe I'm wrong, but, and I'm sure. <sighs> Uh, podcast at crossfakenews.com. We will be corrected if he has. I, mean, I, I, I guarantee you at least one person reading or watching this um, follows his show. Okay. Yes, I know. So, so podcast at crossfakenews.com. We will read the correction next week. Uh, you know, or like this one. Are you good with that? But uh, yeah, uh, I, I like Jew- Jewish zombies for Jesus. <laughs> Because, you know, he rose from the dead. Right. I, I mean, a lot of my friends like to sort of use the, the zombie language when, when talking about Jesus. You know, which, uh, um, you know, uh, Spanish it, it, inquisitors for Jesus. Yeah. But you've got to, you know, <sighs> this is again, okay, it's, it's making fun of Christianity, and to a certain extent, okay, yeah, you can understand. And again, guys, if you want to be really gutsy in your performance art, go make fun of the Muslims, you know. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you know, you know, you know, be like the guy with you know the, uh, Ahmed, the dead terrorist. I kill you, and uh, you know, so go out there and uh, you know, you know. Yeah, see how that works out for you. Yeah, he's, see how that stuff kind of works yeah, out. He, he's worked. He's been all right so far. What's his name? Jeff uh, something. Jeff um, Dunham. Yeah, yeah. Or Dunham. I can't remember his last name. Dunham, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. So you know, I I do kind of get get a pick of the guy who who uh, um um <clears throat> it's it's really started by a guy you know from Second City Training, uh, which is um, the kind of the the minor league of uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, Rick Moranis and uh ton of others came from Second City. Um, it's a ca- Canadian group. Uh, but the guy said he, he, he invites Jehovah's Witnesses to his apartment and <laughs> had 70 pages of notes he gets them with. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but, you know, I mean, seriously, you... Um, uh, well, so I don't know what to do. I, again, it, yeah, you can make fun of Christianity so easily, um, you know. But it's I just full I, of sinners. That's right. I seem to have a thing for sinners. I mean, you know, and that's the reality. Because, all right, so I mean, the real question with this is, okay, how do we as Christians respond to this? Okay, um, I, I don't know that I would pay to go and and you know and see their performance. Okay, um, I, I guess if you really wanted to, I don't, I don't know that I'd call it a sin. <laughs> Maybe it'd be a lesser of two evils, <laughs> but uh, you know, I I, th- I think there's better things to to fill your head with um, than this kind of thing. Um, you know, if 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 you like uh, comedy al- along these lines, I you know I I, I remember when I was in college and um, we would once in a while go watch uh, comedy sports which is a little more uh, family friendly, you know, there's plenty of comedians out there that, but, you know, at the same time, yeah, they're, you know, they're sort of picking on a lot of things. Um, you know, some, some of it's just sort of taken on a context. Some of it's just a, a straight parody of, of something that, you know, um, that's not like Jesus rising from the dead. Oh, well, that's kind of like a zombie. Well, yeah, not really, but, you know, <laughs> or 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 you know, the God hates figs, or the other one they had that they were out picketing yeast. 
you know, <laughs> to, you know, God, you know, condemning yeast. Okay, I mean, yeah, there's there's some things like that that you can, you know, okay, you, you uh, um, it, it, it reminded me kind of Landover Baptist Church. If you've ever seen their that website, mm, yep, yep. You know, my answer to that is ignore it. Don't don't. They, they, what would really make these guys happy is if it upset you and you got into an argument with them. Boy, they, that 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 nothing else would you know make them love you. You know that that that's what they're looking for. They're looking to get a rise out of you. What would really tick them off is we just ignored them and said, okay, go do your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, same way as uh, I mean, they're they're a group. They're, they're it's performance art. They want an audience. They want pro- to be provocative. They want to get in your face. I've used something to say, yeah, I can go play that game. It's, I mean, you know, and that's the thing is they're just, yeah, they're they're just trying to be obnoxious, you know, for the sake of being, on the internet, they'd be called trolls. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I mean, that's really what they are. They're they're trying to start an argument, you know, they're trying to be funny about it, um, and so they're trying to entertain at the same time. Um, but, you know, they realize at the same time that really what it's all about is offending people. Um, or, you know, on the other side, arguably taking something that does offend people and, and making fun of it. But, um, yeah, it's, they're, they're being obnoxious for the sake of being obnoxious. And, um, so yeah, there's just so much better stuff out there, you know, to, um, to spend your time on. There's, there's so many better comedians and better, um, you know, movies and, and, and theater and, and just so many other sources of entertainment that this is the sort of thing that you, you, you can read a news article about it, get the gist of it and go, okay, got it. Move on. That was pointless. So. Yep. Okay. Maybe you guys have different views. Uh, maybe. Okay. We have some ditto heads out there who definitely want to have stuff. Okay. For the record, okay, I pretty, con- you know, Dale and I are both pretty conservative in our political viewpoints, mm-hmm. um, you know, up here, you know, but, 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 okay, I'm sorry, I just don't like Rush Limbaugh. It's funny when, because people up here and, and they said, you know, ditto heads like you and stuff, I'm like, I never listen to Rush Limbaugh, can't stand him, it drives me crazy, um, you know, oh. You know, <laughs> they don't know what to do then with it because, you know, it's like, again, I can't stand him. Wouldn't hurt me if he never listened. I haven't listened to his show in over 20 years. Anyway, but some of you probably have a different opinion. Uh, you know, please feel free to, to share it at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, don't forget, go to the website, get an account, share your own stories. I mean, come on, Dale can't be the only one finding some of these real winners out there like we covered tonight. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to have your, um, uh, 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 you know, you just share some of the stories and stuff that you come across on the net each day. Yeah. And if you have iTunes and, you know, a lot of people do, uh, go to the iTunes store, just do a search on Crossfeed. You'll find it in the podcast section and, um, and leave a review, either the audio or the video. Um, I think the audio has like one or two and the video has none last I checked. So, uh, leave us a review. And, um, you know, we'd really appreciate that. It lets people know that someone's actually listening or watching, uh, because otherwise people will stumble across this and they'll go, it has no reviews. These guys are, you know, talking into thin air. And, and if, you know, sometimes if you look at our like YouTube stats and stuff like that and different, some of the video sharing sites, yeah, you know, some of them have like know, seven views or something like that. It, it all depends on the episode. Other ones we've had hundreds, but, um, you know, that's because most of the people that watch this are watching it, um, right from the actual feed, which by the way, if you are watching this, um, on one of those video sharing sites, uh, you might want to check out the, uh, full quality version which you can get as a podcast, uh, or you can, and all the information, including the uh, higher quality version, is at uh, crossfeednews.com slash podcast, or just go to crossfeednews.com and click on watch the show. So, 
But we do thank you for tuning in, uh, for downloading or, or watching us. Uh, hope that you enjoy the show. We'd love to hear from you. And so again, it's podcast at crossfeednews.com. And, um, oh, and, and I'll, I'm, I'm not sure which order. If it'll probably, I was hoping to get it posted up in the feed before this. Um, but, uh, it's probably due to extenuating circumstances. Um, it's going to come after this episode. And that is, uh, I did something a little special for, uh, for Christmas Day, another, uh, drama. And, uh, since I'm encoding the video for the church website, uh, I'm going to post that. I'll, I'll stick it in the feed so that if you, um, enjoy that sort of thing, you can watch it. And, um, and I welcome your feedback on that one too. So. Okay. God bless. Have a good week, everybody. Good night, everybody. God bless.